Greetings and salutations, everybody. We are back. Well, this is Peter Bowman, and I'm joined by my good friends and co-hosts, Eric Carlson and Gavleaf, and we are back with a new episode of Three Men and an Anime. In record time! Ooh. Yes. Yeah, shockingly quickly, honestly. We got through the... It was amazing. I chose a 13-episode tw- series, and we got through it in two weeks. Yeah. And no one had any sp- scheduling conflicts. It was astonishing. I, it's just... I, I'm shocked. Like, so everything like, like, has conspired to get this done. Like, yeah. monumental occasion. We're recording this, and it's not even midnight for me. I know. We got yeah, started. holy crap. We got started at a reasonable time, too. Yeah, I was paying attention when I was streaming Super Robot Wars today. <laughs> and said, I mean, hey, to be fair, I should make dinner and stop streaming a little bit earlier than I normally would. To be fair, it is because Daylight Savings pushed the clocks back an entire hour. Well, that too, yes. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> for me, anyway. Right. So, that's why it's before midnight for you, but... Yes, I'm recording this on a Tuesday for once, not a Wednesday morning. And until we, until, <laughs> for the next 20 minutes or so. Yes. <laughs> so, anyways, we are covering my most seri- recent series selection, like Chorus Recoil. Um, um, it, it basically, uh, it is sort of a cute girls doing cute things thing show, except that the cute things is um, assassinations. Murder people. Yeah. Cute girls doing assassins things. Cute girls doing John Wick things. Yeah, yeah I, I've I've heard that comparison raised a few times, and the whole like there is a you know the the secret society of assassins kind of situation mm-hmm. thing going on. Um, luckily, the lead in this is very much not John. No. Yeah. To be fair, <laughs> she fights a lot the way this his the way her combat style is very similar. Yes. Just about only about a tenth of the aggression. Yes, uh, because she is. Arguably more terrifying in a couple of ways. Yeah. <laughs> and in other ways, less. She's just too chipper to murder people. Quite she is way. a giant cinnamon roll. Yeah. Also, she could kill you if she, if she wanted to. Easily. She just doesn't want to. But yes, <clears throat> so, like Horus Recoil, um, let's just get the, let's get the big elephant out of the room. Boy, howdy, the setting is dystopian. Yeah. Love it. I mean, it, it's... Everything's printed in very like bright, happy pastel colors. Everything's everything's a okay. You know, it doesn't feel it doesn't have the appearance of most dystopias. Right, so, I will say know, this not... flat, flatly. It is a lot like the world of Psychopaths in that, on the surface, it looks pretty close to Utopia in Japan. Utopian in Japan. Yeah, yeah. Except the color palette is much closer to the average slice of life as opposed to oh yeah, it's, say it's... Edge Runners or right. or Psychopaths for that matter. This is very much going for one of those, this could happen. Th- th- you know, this could be happening behind the scenes and you'd never know kind of situations. Because everything's too cute and happy. Yes. Everything's everything's very real. It's the uh, real I world. mean, it's not happening here in the United States. I can tell you why. Because yeah. we are not cute and happy. <laughs> but... <laughs> yes. It is. I, mean, yeah. I, mean, I, I think, to be fair, I think it's more that there's, there's no... I mean, and this applies to the UK as well, but there's no way the US could keep that a secret for that long. No fucking way. At any rate, so <laughs> how, why is it dystopian? Well, apparently, at some point in the in the past, in Japan, they decided that it would be a brilliant idea to take a whole bunch of orphans, train them to be assassins, and have them kill off undesirables. Now, to be hey, fair, uh... their definition of undesirables does seem to lean very heavily towards the criminal, and usually the more disruptive criminals. Yes. Yeah. You know, the ones that actually, like, you know, actively hurt people. Basically, imagine the Black Widow program with a conscience. Sort of conscience. I air quotes, would air quotes, air quotes. Thank you. Conscience. That. I wouldn't even give them the benefit the air, uh, of the air quotes, honestly. <laughs> they <laughs> Everything they do is They monstrous. say what they're doing is for the public safety. They're only targeting bad guys. Quote. Yeah. And for the most part, from what we see at the stage of the show's happening, that is intact, in fact, accurate. Because there aren't any, there isn't much left in the way of pe- petty crime. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's not much in the way of petty crime. I mean, um, there are pol- there doesn't police. Be much in the way of political dissidents. Nope. I wonder why. I will say this the police do exist and they do have an actual job, apparently. So there, yeah. there has to be some form of. Pe- the Yakuza exist. The, the, yeah. very, the very first opening of this of the show shows us like this happy, uh, you know. Uh, cityscape sort of situation, everyone going about their business, and then one guy standing out in the crowd who's like, looks like he's going to be trying to plant a bomb, getting suddenly black-bagged and capped by a fucking schoolgirl. Yes. Now, 
more importantly, the Lycoris program, the one we focus on, is are all they are all young girls who have been who are orphans and have been trained since child since very young age to become assassins. And their uniform, when they're out, they have a uniform. It is that is it a uniform of a, a schoolgirl, sort of high school student schoolgirl uniform. Yeah. So they it is incredibly innocuous looking in Japan. Yeah. Now you know the thing that bugs me about that is. Hmm? Okay, cool. You've got the the high school uniform. So um, when you've got these gangs of high school girls running around during high school hours and they're not in class, doesn't that stand out? Actually, class. not in, in, in Japan. No, not really. Actually, hmm, okay. No, it, it, so unless you are during it is exam period time, like students, if you, students decide to ditch, there's not much they're going to do about it. Fair enough. Exam period time, like everyone is very serious because they, their exams matter a lot. Mm-hmm. But if you decide I don't feel like going to class today, you don't go to class today. From what this is from what I understand, I might be wrong. All right, fair enough. <clears throat> but at any rate, the, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So yeah, like yeah. What we what we are shown is the people that the like Horus program targets are murderers, terrorists, etc., like that. There's a lot of implication and hints that it's more than that, but we don't. They don't actively show it. Yeah, they don't yeah, show they, it. It's uh, it, it's easy to ignore if you're not lo- watching for it. We were. They, and as they, soon as they described what was happening, I was watching for it. Oh yeah. Yeah, it, it's like they. The thing that I get from it is like they the writer. I'm absolutely sure the writer thinks that the the licorice uh, like Horus. Sorry, I just keep thinking licorice every time I hear it. Um, <laughs> I, I get a feeling that like the writers think that this is legitimately a force for good. I don't think, think so. There, there's a real I, implication that it's not. The, but it's how much of like uh, again, and not just to spoil anything just yet, but like for the most part, although yeah, it's kind of shitty as a, of a childhood. The the girls themselves are mostly you know they as far as they're concerned, they're doing what they do because that's what they've been trained to do. Yeah, and the the, the big thing the, is. The, They're fighting the, the good fight. The central message of the show is like Horace's methodology is just fucking wrong. Mm. But like from our point of view, outside looking in, no, that's like, the, that's the not, that's the text of the show, Gav. No, no, no. I don't. I, I know what I'm trying to get at, but. It, it's more that I think, yeah, they're saying that it's the wrong way to go about it, but it's but it's like. It's still it, it's a potential for being a good thing. No, they they really don't. Whereas, it, that's not my that's not my take from it. From what the, what the what text I'm is, taking. because I think it, it, like the whole point of Chisato's like Chisato and Ta- Takina's arc is well, we should we should get to that. Like yeah. So yeah, it it's the I my take is it's. It is within this setting the Lycoris are a necessary are a quote necessary end quote evil. Yeah, they are not a well, force for good in any way, shape, or form. They are force well, for well, order. Well, There's a difference. Yes. Well, this this is the thing I'm trying to say. It's like it's not so much that the show itself is like saying they are necessary, but they are a necessary. I won't say evil, even you know. Like I say, I think they're they're saying there's flaws, but. No, they're, it's they're a positive. They're, I, for, I think from us, no, it's not in, even. It's like, not even that. Like it's okay. Uh, All right. I, well, let's get let's get to talking about the actual show before we yeah, yeah. get into arguing about our our takeaways on it. <laughs> because that, I, it's, it's a discussion worth having, unquestionably. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Um, I just want to get to. We should probably get to like actually talking about the characters for a bit first. <laughs> Sorry, I don't. I don't want to step on you on your on your your point too much, Gabe. I I do apologize for that. Um. So yeah, we should talk like so. We focus primarily on um, the denizens of Lyco Reco, which is a branch of DA, which is the organization that runs the Licorus. And uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's also a, a coffee shop. It's a coffee shop. It's it's very undercover, and it is it has one Licor- Licorus on staff there, uh, which would be Chisato Nishigaki Nishigiki. Nishikigi. Sorry, we go. Oh my god, misread it. Uh, Chisato is the titu- is the is the blonde haired moppet you see in the image on the screen there. If you're watching uh, the text there, and they sort of yeah, she's uh, she's 17, and she is considered the most the most effective like, like Horus that the program has ever produced. 
She's also, a monster. She, she is an absolute monster. Also, she's decided that killing people is wrong. So her gun is loaded yeah. with, with, with non-lethal rounds. This is the biggest point of suspension of disbelief you're going to have to have in this show. Suspension of disbelief, my ass. It's the biggest point of bullshit in this show. It really is. Like, we, we see her, like, firing through... As um, I said, you have to suspend doors. your disbelief on this, yeah. otherwise the show doesn't... Otherwise you are going to get tripped on it constantly. She, yeah. She's firing non-lethal rounds that, that are at multiple points described as rubber bullets... Non-lethal bullets are paint rounds because they're basically paint. Well, they're, 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 they are they are paint rounds at one point. They are using paint gun, yeah. paintball guns during that scene. But like the first time we see her shoot, uh, her it penetrates the car door. Yes, through a car yeah. door yes. and hits a guy. And yeah. yes, it is com- it is completely impossible, and it is a point you have to move past. Otherwise, you're not going to get past. You're not going to be able to watch the rest of the show, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. No, no, absolutely. It's, yeah, it's also- not it's not a major thing, but it's like okay. I, I will say this, it's also just uh, to get over it because everything else is so much fun. You're just sort of like, that was stupid, but the rest of this is fucking great. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I can put the I, I can I can put that in the back burner and, and deal with it later. And I will say that at very least, they don't say the guns, the, the, the shots don't hurt people. No, they hurt. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Chisato actually thinks they should hurt. That's sort of the point. Yeah, well... This is the thing, like, we've described her as being this, like, cinnamon roll that doesn't like to kill. She has no problem putting an extra round or two into someone if they've pissed her off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, she does on regular Or regular just to occasion. make sure they stay down for the requisite required uh, amount of time. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she tries to knock people out with these bullets. She'll, she'll shoot people in the head with a rubber bullet, and these are not... Nor- which, mind you, if it was a real rubber bullet, that would be bad. Yeah. yeah. By the way, real rubber bullets... Ah. They're called less than lethal. Yeah, not they're not actually non-lethal. They're called less lethal. Yeah, yeah. They 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 can kill <laughs> and have. They do kill. They do kill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shoot someone in the wrong place. It's mm. so yeah. Shizato's bullets are bullshit, but they're entertaining bullshit. So whatever. Takeda is the new Lycoris who's been assigned to Lyco Rico because, um, well, she got sort of kicked out of uh, DA because she disobeyed orders, technically. Yeah. She made the foolish de- decision as a professional assassin to value life. Now, to be fair, she was valuing the life of her teammate. Yeah. And I mean, not so much we... anyone else in the not so much any of the bad guys in the room. <laughs> no. Well, what we see what happens is the bad guys ha- have like are in an office building and have are holding one of one of her teammates hostage they lose comms with the with um control so like the the team leader is like i i've got no orders nothing's going on i was just told to stand by and no more orders are coming through what the fuck and um talking is sort of like you know what there's a heavy machine gun sitting right here you know what? fuck it i'm just going to turn everyone but her into swiss cheese Yep. Oh nope. Not not so much Swiss cheese as um a, a, as chunky salsa. Our teammate survived. That's what's important. Yep. And that's what she was. And she was actively shooting to make sure that happened. Yes. Yeah. Because she's a, she's a crack shot. Yes. Of course, control wanted the uh, the guys alive so they could um trace back the uh, the the, the, the guns. arms deal that they were in the middle of doing. Yep. Well, they 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 say that, but they they throw up a couple of um, of issues basically to to to, to reprimand her. That being the the primary one, but they you know it's also the point where you know they lost comms and she acted on her own initiative. Yeah. Well, that that was Which entirely is, that, that was them scapegoating. Yeah, that was well, entirely. It, well, it was it was, but we find out later on. But that, no, that's it, it's it's a scapegoat idea, but it is legit. You know, these girls do not act without orders. They do not countermand orders. Like the very last action is that Fair. entire no. That's that's that true. That entire thing yes. is used against yeah. them. Oh yeah, it is absolutely. The organization like, is not as good as they think it is. Yeah. yeah, the fact that she picked up that gun and and took action without being ordered to do so is a big no no against her. Yep, and a massive point in her favor for, for like Rico for the most part. <laughs> yes. yes. Shisato is all about this. Like, wait, so you did that and saved your teammate's life? Yep. Sweet. Well done. Good job. <laughs> you rock. That was exactly the correct thing to do. 
I'm glad someone's got a brain over there. Oh, you're coming here? Awesome. Now there are two of us with a brain. Hooray! Just one brain cell, though. We sort of pass it back and forth. Now, I will say this. The other thing is, yeah, Chisato, Chisato seems like she's a kind of a ditz. Mm-hmm. She's also way smarter than she lets on. Oh, yes. She notices everything. Yeah. But she, she actually... actually sort of her superpower in that she notices everything. Yep. She yep. nothing slides by her and lets her like anticipate people's movements in combat, mm-hmm. which is why you can't fucking shoot her. Right. You can't. No, she she dodges bullets. Her eyesight's too good. And it's not like she's moving faster than the bullet. She just knows where you're going to put it. Right. Yeah. She, she's, someone she's... actually comments like the better the shot, it's easier for her to dodge because, you know, you don't fear the guy that's uh, you don't fear the world's best Two second best swordsman. Don't really fear each other. They fear the fucking novice with the chainsaw. Right? <laughs> Is that idiot? Well, don't, I have no idea what that idiot's gonna do. Yeah. But yeah, like legitimately, it's like yeah, it's like no, no. You're so precise; it makes it easier for her to, to dodge. What? Yeah. So yeah, um, and so yeah, so. And the beginning of talking is basically thinking, well, if I do well enough here, maybe I can earn my way back up to DA because that's where I, that's where I quote belong, end quote. Right. And, you know, Chisato is all like, well, you seem like a nice person. I like you. I want to help you get what you, what you want. So, yeah, I mean, I'd be be awesome if you stayed here. You're super cute and I like you. But, you know, if that's what you, if that was what make you happy, then you should do that. Absolutely. In the meantime, I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you everything. I'll show you repeatedly why the way DA operates is stupid. <laughs> Let's go actually help people. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, yeah, like, their first day of jo- doing jobs at, like, like Oriko literally is her basically going around helping people out in all sorts of little ways. Mm. Like, making a coffee delivery to some guys. Um... Uh, helping out at, like the 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 Japanese as a second language center, helping out at a school with the kids. Also helping the cops out with a bodyguarding detail that totally doesn't go wrong. Oh wait, not that it's their fault it goes wrong. It goes wrong because the situation is because everything's connected. The show it turns out. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But um, initially, uh, Takina has a lot of trouble. Because she thinks, like she's she's as far as she's concerned, she's still working for a branch of Lyco. Yep. So right. she's expecting, you know, to carry on doing what they were doing. Yep. And she's like, "Why am I wasting my time here? What are we doing here? Do we? We're helping people." Out? And she's like, "Why have you brought your gun? Don't I need it? No. no. <laughs> Hopefully not. God, I hope no. <laughs> we're going to a we're going to a, a, an elementary school. Why do you have your gun?" You didn't tell me we were going to elementary school. Okay, fair point. <laughs> fair point, but still, why do you why do you assume we're going to need our gun? <laughs> we're like Horus. Oh boy. Yeah, she has um, has a giant stick up her ass. Oh, she, she does it first. Yes, absolutely. She has absolute trouble letting go of her previous life. Well, I mean, she is she 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 grew up in the Lycoris program. She like from a very young yeah. age, and yeah. I mean, so, so did so did Chisato. It turns we find out, but. Chisato had a life-changing moment at one point and uh, when she was yeah. fairly young and uh yeah. Takina did not. And her yeah. life-changing moment just happened. <laughs> yeah. She uh let's just say the the indoctrination is strong at these kids. Yes it is. Oh yes. Oh yes it is. Um but yeah, so the other denizens of of Lyco Rico are uh Kurumi, not sorry, uh Mika and Mizuki. Mizuki is the Mid twenties woman who uh, is also used to be a member of the intelligence division of DA, uh, and is primarily the driver. Their driver. She's a very she, good driver. She's a driver fixer, scout kind of sort of situation. Yep. But she doesn't inv- She doesn't often get involved in the you know in active situations. Obviously, right. She's she's a great get- getaway driver though. Oh yeah, um, and Mika is sort of. Uh, He's the manager of Like Rico, and uh, he actually was Chisato's teacher back at when mm. he trained her how to be a killer, basically. Yeah, she to the point she she still calls him Sensei. Yes. Yeah. Also, he's basically a, her her dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I thought so. He he's um he's basically operations control. Oh yeah, for, absolutely. Writing actual ops to undergo also. Yep. Yeah, he's he's the agent. He's the, he's the, yeah. he's the guy who gets the jobs and you know assigns them and all that kind of stuff. Yep. And he he knows you know like I say he'll, they they do. It's not to say they don't take any more um you know interesting jobs, shall we say? Nope, they do. But he know he knows their worth and whether they're things that Chisato will actually. Do, do yeah for a start. <laughs> and uh, basically acts as that filter, and he's like, "No, there's no point sending me this, sending this job to me. Send it to Lyco; they'll do it properly. Right? Or, you know, they'll do it their way. If that's what you want doing, <laughs> you're not doing their way. Go to go, go talk to them, not us. I mean, it's quite clear the reason that Lyco Reco exists is because the DA like absolutely understands that Chisato is far too valuable an asset to get rid of. Right. But she's no good as an assassin if she won't kill. Right. It's like, okay, we we you are going to stay on the payroll because we'll eventually convince you to come back to do your actual job. Right? Right? That's cute. It's cute that you think that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really is adorable that you think that. Uh boy, howdy are they wrong. Actually, I'm fairly certain the the head of the the head of head of DA is not stupid enough to think she actually can get her to come back full time to do her proper mm. thing. Well, she tries, like, not... but she's. I, it's pretty clear she's like, yeah, I, I know, I know. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not so much that they're on the payroll because we we know they're not because they they have some, shall we say, financial issues later on. Uh, they they do get some money from day, just not enough. Depending on, like I say, it depends on the jobs that they get, right. basically. And like I say, the, the 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 jobs that don't involve murdering people don't pay so well. I mean, they, DA will call Chisato in to save, like, to basically, we need you to make sure that our agents don't die on this op. Okay. Mm. Like, during the opening op, the, the thing with the, 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 the guns transaction, arms deal. Yeah. She was en route to help out there. Because yeah. we need to take, A, we need to take someone alive. So, um, yeah, we very much want Chisato there, actually. We have she someone who wants to ask yeah. questions. <laughs> so... Hey, this is perfect for Chisato. And B, yeah, if anything goes wrong, Chisato will just clean it up. Like she just we know we know. Yeah. It's Chisato. <laughs> yeah. Um but yeah, so and the course of the series is mostly Takina and like the sort of ongoing sort of narrative is largely T Takina learning to be a person, basically. Yes. Uh and finding out bits about Chisato's background, and there's an one ongoing overarching plot in the show. Well, they're two. Yeah, they're two, but they're intertwined. Uh, plot, well, plot, plot point one is involves the guns deal. Why were those? Why were there a thousand guns? Why was there an arms deal for a thousand guns? That yeah, who, who the fuck needs that many guns? Who's arming a battalion? Right. Yeah. Who's arming a fucking battalion? Like, even terrorists don't need that many, that many all at once. Yeah. So um, even like even the most like advanced terrorist cell has maybe a couple of hundred guys. Why do you need a thousand guns? Right. Like you might need like a couple of guns for each person, but like what? <laughs> so that's problem number one, figuring that 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 that's that's part of the overarching plot. It turns out it's tied to this guy, um hang on, let me get the guy's name. Majima. Um who uh uh, is uh not yeah yeah he's uh he's 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 kind of horrifying. Yeah, he's grade A sociopath. Yeah, he's not wrong though. He's not wrong about no. He's wrong about some things, Eric. Okay, he's fine. very right about one thing, and he's very his wrong about goal, other shit. His end goal is correct. Everything else is wrong. <sighs> I'm not he, the methodology the. The methodology, the manner of recruitment, the um, price he's willing to pay. We'll get to that in a but, second. <laughs> yeah. Um. So that Majima's overarching plot, which we'll talk about in a bit, that that is major spoilers. So, mm. um. And also, there is also a group called the Allen Institute, who sponsor people with incredible genius level talents. Yeah. To make sure that they can bring their talents to the world. It's an anonymous organization, um, and they basically anyone who's helped out gets this little owl pendant. Yeah, it's, it's like the first one we see is like I think he's a, a swimmer. Yeah, 
Something like that, who yeah. was identified at a young age as being an extremely competent and talented, gifted swimmer. So the Allen Institute basically put him on a um, a scholarship, made sure that he could practice and not have to worry about work and and this and other. And we see him like on the Olympic podium, right? You know, they do they go out of their way, and you know, nothing is too expensive. Nothing is is uh, beyond. Um, what they're willing to do to bring out our specific talent. The yep. trick comes to what they consider a talent. There's, there's not just that. It's also, they're very dogmatic about some things as well. Mm, it yeah. turns out. Um, the One important point we forgot to mention about Chisato and part, part of her rep, because she has a real rep, is at one point there's a giant radio tower that got blown, that goes attacked by terrorists. Uh, not people know that it was happened. They assume it was an accident, but within within like Oreco, like within like Horus, within DA, and it is known that it was stopped by one Lacorus when it was able to was able to stop the entire terrorist organization, and that was Chisato. Yeah, when she was about like eight. <laughs> now, it's eight I believe it's about that same time as when she was she left. It's very Lacorus, long. It was, not, she basically, it was not long after she, that. No, it was actually. No, no, it was before. It was she. She, yeah, she left not long after that. Yeah, because she basically, they, they like the other girls, uh, DA, even the ones that come after her, know her as the Tower Girl because she basically took the blame for everything. Well, well she's it's it's a mixed thing. The big thing is that she is she's what she stopped she stopped her from being worse than it was. Mm-hmm. Um, but she also was not she was very much not killing at that point. If I remember yeah. correctly. Well, yeah, because she'd already had the yes. um, the gift. Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So it turns out, so important, unsurprising point. Port, this this is not a not, not a major spoiler. Chisato is an Allen Institute kid, and we are not told what her talent is for a while. I will let you guys figure out what her talent is later. <laughs> we will not spoil it immediately, basically. Um, but yeah. Uh, so those are the two. So the Allen Institute. Wants Chisato to complete her all the basically every talent has a task that's sort of set before that is that they really are supposed to do because to bring their talent to the world and Chisato's and it's usually up to them to sort of figure out from what I can tell figure it out for themselves as long as they're as long as it has to do with what their talent is. Um. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's the over arc. Those are the two major plot arcs, right? Right. Along with, you know, talking about basically figuring out how to be an actual person. <laughs> yeah. Which I'd say it's probably the most the, the most front and center plot. Yes. But and yeah, also, these, these it's probably the most satisfying true. part of the story, also, in my opinion. Yeah. And that's actually saying something. Chisat Takina's sorry, not Chisato, Chisato, Takina's arc as sort of becoming like actually becoming a good, becoming a person is really just really heartwarming and sweet and cool. I, I really liked it. I, I really, I really like talking a lot. The episode in the, um, in the aquarium. It's is so adorable. adorable. Yes. Yeah. Ish. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it's basically, it's all about like just trying to bring her out of a shell and get her to be like, as normal as someone who's been raised to be an assassin all her life can be. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, like, she's, you know, she learns, like, Shazadu teaches her that you don't have to kill everybody. To, to Killing everybody is not the only solution. Mm. It's the, you're no, allowed to express emotion. You're allowed to express emotion, A. B, uh, yeah, when you, all, the only tool you have is a hammer, everything starts looking like a nail. Mm-hmm. So, oh... At the same time, they're also keen to point out, you know, it's like, okay, but based on everything that's happened, sure, you do at least have, you know, you do have a, a skill set. Don't, we're not saying that, that we know that that skill set and what you can do is wrong. Just learn to think for yourself and yep. judge when it's necessary to be used. Yep. Like, there's a, like, there's a great joke where um, Takina gets like gets in a car as she's about to drive off somewhere and she just was like, wait, you could drive? She goes, so can you. You wouldn't be a Lycoris if you couldn't. 
<laughs> so they've been trained. They've been trained to drive since they were like twelve yep. or something. It's like you know, it's necessary skill sets. They need to be assassins. Yep. So yeah, um, the first new the we the event the uh, sorry, like a record picks up one additional character eventually, Kurumi, and she ties into she is a tiny young young thing. I we have no idea how old she actually is. I'm guessing she's like twelve, but yeah. She is a super hacker. Um, she goes by the handle Walnut, and the handle Walnut has been around forever, and is like the rep is has the rep of being the best hacker in the world, and has been for a long time. Mm. I'm guessing this is a Dread Pirate Roberts sort of thing. Yeah, this does not mean that the current Walnut does not deserve the title. No, she is in fact the best hacker in the world. She is absolutely. She is recognized by other hackers as the best hacker in the world. Yep. And in fact, one of them goes through great one of them goes through great lengths to try to get her killed. And thinks they succeeded, which is why she's yeah. hanging out like a reco. Because she's basically, yep, I'm, I am, quote, dead, end quote. I'm also made entirely out of sass and sarcadonic sarcasm. And gene, and, and raw intelligence. You should fight me. And she can she's talk a, me about off by sweet. She's, she's probably my favorite character. She's great. Yeah. The, I will, the every, amount of shit she slings is Oh, it's great. great. She's, <laughs> she is hilarious. She's wonderful. I will say this. I think every character who hangs out, who like routine, who's part of the Leica Reco crew are great. Mm. Like Mizuki is the least interesting of the five and she is, she's a legit interesting character. Yeah. And another show she'd break out, but she's sort of, it's fades like, in the background with, uh, but while being surrounded by all these great characters. Yeah. Like yeah. Mika's incredible. Like, especially once you find out more about his past, you're like, Oh shit, oh, you fucking yeah. rock dude. Yeah. Now, last couple of episodes, Meek is like, oh, fuck. Okay. Did not know who was fucking with. No. <laughs> it's like, like, you figure out, yeah, he's a trainer at, like, uh, he's a trained, uh, trainer at DA. He taught, taught, taught the Lycoris. And we found out, yeah, he was an assassin in the past. Oh. Oh, he was that kind of assassin. That, cool. yeah. oh, he's that, le- oh, that level. Oh, oh, dear. This guy is fucking John Wick. He got out of the game. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's he implies that he's got he walks with a cane and his legs bad so he can't be an assassin anymore. Mm-hmm. Yep. This is totally true. Absolutely. It is <laughs> Absolutely. never revealed. People. Assassins never lie. <laughs> never. Yeah. Like his his part his former assassin partner Jin, the silent, never talks. Except that, you know, Mika, time. Mika recognized his voice. And some, he ta- doesn't talk a lot, but, like, Mika recognized his voice immediately. How did Mika recognize his voice immediately if Jin never talks? Huh. <laughs> it's subtle things like that that you make you realize that, yeah. are, that, are, that are clues early that Mika doesn't always tell the truth. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> I really like this Mika. Is, this, is one of, this is one of those shows where... Everyone's capable of acting the idiot and being very one-dimensional and, and very mm-hmm. boring in some in times, unless you're paying attention and you realize no, these guys are they they they're exceptionally guarded, mm-hmm. and there's a hell of a lot more going just underneath the surface. Like like Chisato, okay, she's this absolute super killer. Can hear well, not hear things, but can predict things coming. Can defend herself. Is basically untouchable. Complete dits and works in a cafe. Goes around talking, you know, with um, with uh, you know, with, with with school children and helping out here and there and everywhere and teaching languages, whatever else. Yeah, you think she lives in like a girly flat and a, a, an apartment and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, she absolutely does in a safe house, one of many, because she knows that she's known among the assassin community mm-hmm. and isn't stupid. Like the the apartment setup she's got going on is next level. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's really clever. <laughs> oh my god! And then it's implied later on when it's when that safe house is burned. Like they say, they don't refer to it as her home. They say you'll need to use another safe house. It's, like, oh, it's one of was, many. But that one was my favorite. Yeah, <laughs> she liked that one. <laughs> yeah, it's all implications. Like she is set and prepared. <laughs> She is no oh, idea. There's, so there's an episode when they go, where she has to go back to HQ 
to for a for testing basically to make sure that she you know yeah okay your reflexes match up where they're supposed to be your eyesight matches up where it's supposed to be etc 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 okay cool you are you are cleared to be quote a lycoris end quote because it's Chisato. Yeah, they do this whole. Uh, the explanation is that it's to um, to set her license. Right. Now to keep her license as, as an assassin. Right. <laughs> uh, she of course doesn't want. She's like, I don't want to go back. I don't. I hate going back there. It's stupid. Fine, I'll go back. It's the last day I can go back. At fine. And talking is like, ooh, ooh, can I come so I can like try to talk to the boss? It's like, yeah, sure. I'll, and she's out. like, yeah, sure, totally cool. I love. I, it means I get to hang out with you. That's cool. We get to hang out, and it'll be a lot more fun than going there by myself and things being stupid, because everything is there is stupid. It's stupid. By the way, you don't want to go back because it's stupid. I hate it. It's stupid. <laughs> it's like, it's very clear, it's just, there there, there are, uh, there are girl, other, like, horse there, Chisato is actually very fond of. Yeah. And the implication I get is that she actually has sort of a, while she very clearly thinks the boss is terrible, is, 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 is a jerk and evil... She also has sort of a, yeah, she's also kind of like an important figure in my life, and I do have some respect for her. Mm. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to sass her if she's being an idiot. Or is throwing somebody under the bus that does not deserve it. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. You mean the comms are down? Wait, why were the comms down, boss? That should be impossible yeah. from what I understand yeah, about your, your, AI, your AI systems. More importantly, how were they down? The only way that can happen is if someone had ha- if someone had hacked the the unhackable computer, boss. Were you guys hacked? Sounds like you guys were hacked. I'm gonna say you guys are hacked. Shut up. Yep, totally hacked. <laughs> <laughs> you can see the bosses are going. God, this is why I'm glad she's not here all the time. <laughs> well, well, that's the thing. She's got that. She's got that freedom that like no one, none of the other Lycoris would dare speak to her like that. Oh no, of course they wouldn't. But she- but she's got that like that distance between her now that she's like, nah, nah, you know my value, you know what I can do, and I'm not directly under you anymore, so I'm gonna say what I think. Yep. No, the, the, the Fumi. Uh, what is her? Name? Is it uh, Fumi? Uh, that's Fuki. The, uh, Fuki. Yeah. Yeah, Fuki. Who is yeah. who is Shisato's old partner? It turns out. And talking uh, is a uh, former commander. Right. Uh, and sitting there, she, she right. had to put off, she had to put off her training for a while and her testing. And so they're doing the testing at the same time. Uh, and Fuki is an incredible at what she does. And you're wa- during the whole, tr- the, the testing thing you're watching is just is just schooling her on like everything. <laughs> and it's not actually a competition. It's like reflex test. Fuki does it really well. And then Shisato does it. It's like, what? <laughs> yeah, it is. It, it's like the, the, they have the you know the the figure eight board basically right. with, with buttons on. When it flash, when the light flashes up, you've got to hit the button and test your reflexes. And Fuki's like, and just that was a yeah, <laughs> while having a conversation, right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Fuki's like telling like, that we're just mouthing off the boss. Fuki's like, just ought to don't you can't do that. Just that was like. Fuck you, I can't. <laughs> What's the boss gonna do? Kick me out of DA? <laughs> Already happened. I, it, I, she can have you killed, she can try. <laughs> <laughs> Others have tried. Turns out, yes, actually, we find out later yeah. on. Um, so, yeah, um, and they found out like that, you know, they due to the bodyguard job they did that went badly. Uh, well, it, the woman they were bodyguarding was being stalked. It turned out she's being stalked by people who were tied to the guns deal because she'd actually taken a photo of the guns guns deal several hours before when they when the when the like, horror showed up, which meant the guns deal happened early and they got bad information, which again yep. shouldn't be possible. Mm. That's that's the other thing we mentioned. Like uh, you mentioned it in passing there, the Lycoris. Like, I mean, the entire system is governed by a super AI. Yep. Okay, it's, it's not like sentient or anything like that, but it's literally meant to be like this infallible, impenetrable... Supercomputer. Uh, supercomputer, info yeah. net that will, you know, that can predict and uh, get information from anywhere, do everything, should be untouchable. It's basically Ziggy. And it was yeah. hacked by uh, <laughs> was hacked. by someone called Walnut. I have no idea who that that could possibly be. Nope. Nope. That's that's not important. That won't come up again. 
So, yeah. And it turns out that Walnut was had the dime dropped on him by another hacker by the name of uh, Robo- Robota, who basically gets gets rid of him and is trying to is now the the best best hacker in the world. Yes, because, because clearly Walnut's dead. Therefore, I'm the best. Because yeah. Walnut was hacking into Lacoris on behalf of a client mm-hmm. who decided to use Robota to get rid of Walnut when Walnut started asking questions. Because Walnut is very smart and is asking is that, was was asking for for the client for the client's point of view the wrong questions. Yeah, yeah. Why do you, why why are you doing all this? Oh no no you can't be asking that question. I mean to be fair, Walnut should have known better. Discretion is part of the service being provided. Yeah, Walnut was very thought. The thing is, Walnut was was positive. There's no way that he, they could be tracked down. So yeah, yeah. it doesn't hurt. It, there's no there's no danger in, in asking asking probing questions. They th- Walnut thought they had all the leverage. They were wrong. Yep. But that's what they thought. That's not a mistake they make. That Walnut makes again. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, ah, right. Okay. Oh yeah. Sorry. Did they, did they mention they took Walnut out? Uh, uh, yeah. Um... Oh yeah. They blew up their blew up Walnut's apartment. That totally worked. Then Walnut yeah. hired a. Uh, Hires uh, like a record to get them to the airport, um, and they're and mercenaries are sent after them. And uh, while well, they're gunned down, it's a real shame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that doesn't go as well as, as you could think. I won't spoil how what the actual yeah. details of it because it's yeah. wildly entertaining. <laughs> yes. It is a lot of fun. But yeah, the uh, <laughs> Walnut gets out and it's just like, "Yep, yeah, well, um, I'm dead now," um, which is pretty good for me because it means no one's hunting me but I need a place to crash and I'm about need... four foot nothing and I need a lap uh, a, a Wi-Fi connection so I'm staying in your closet and like <laughs> as well and the, as long as you help us with your hacking skills sure also we can't call you walnut anymore why not well because you're dead fuck uh, call me Kurumi that's just walnut in Japanese but yeah well that's what I'm going with shut up well it's adorable <laughs> so whatever <laughs> And no one is going to think this four foot nothing hack uh, little girl is a, is the super hacker. So whatever. Yeah. And they are correct I'd be about that. Soaking wet, weighted down with lead with um lead shoes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kurumi's adorable. Uh, I'm pretty sure she fits in my pocket. Probably. At any rate, um, I mean, of course she fits in my pocket. She's fucking like a piece of cellophane with paint on it. She fits in my pocket. Right. But <laughs> <laughs> at any rate. So uh, we are eventually introduced to a member of the Allen Institute, though they keep it very much in the down low, uh, Yoshimatsu, Shinji Yoshimatsu, um, who takes a very takes an interest, who realizes who uh, Chisato is and is very interested in her and totally is not trying to prod her into the direction that she's supposed to be going in because, um, yeah, so it turns out the Allen Institute's sort of whole take on your gifts are that, you know... Uh, there's exactly one thing you're supposed to be doing with them, and it, it the fact that they found your gift means that you you have no longer have un, un, needless uncertainty in your life, and you know what you're what you're supposed to be doing. Therefore, Chisato not doing what she's supposed to be doing is wrong and bad for her. Yeah, she can't like, be happy that way. We have identified this target, this this talent. It is the reason that God put you on this earth, so we will help you do it, and you will do it. So, uh, what is Chisato's talent? She's the world's best assassin. That's what her talent is. Yeah. All her skills make her an absolute monster of an assassin. She doesn't want to kill people. This is a problem. So a lot of what Yoshimatsu is doing is trying to get her to kill somebody. Because otherwise she will never be truly happy because she's not fulfilling her actual purpose. Yeah. Murder. Right. Right. This, of course, steps around, has a couple of issues with the, 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 motive, the, the whole thing. The issue number one of being, you know... Money! Um, well, you know, they're, they're, talents have more than one way to be used, uh, just just saying. Yeah. Um, t- two, uh, boy, howdy, self-determination's a good thing. Yeah. Agency's a good thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the other big thing, is, is Takini learning that she actually has agency. Yeah. Yes. Which she learns by the by the end of the show. Boy, how do she figure that out? 
Yeah. Um, that, that's actually one of the, the overarching themes of the show yes. is, is is agency and, and how much of it you actually have. Yep. It's more than anyone will tell you. <laughs> yep. Uh, so, yeah, Majima, but we mentioned earlier, the uh, guy who's behind the guns deals or part of the gun, sort of behind. He's one of the people behind the guns deals. He's a terrorist. Yeah. And his overarching sort of goal for in the, within the story of 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 like of, of this show of Lycoris Recoil, he wants to expose the Lycoris. He wants to expose Da for what they're doing because it's well, unnatural. When it, well, when it first starts, it's he it's not specifically uh, Lycoris because he doesn't he well, doesn't the, learn the about Lycoris, them until he's, the, he's a, he wants to expose the force in Japan that's bought, that's making things too orderly and too yes yeah. Or it's stripping people of uh, of their own determination. Yes. It's it's literally a case of you know he 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 wants a world where he can do what he wants and so can everyone else. Yes. Uh, he is very much a there should be no rules kind of guy. Everyone should do what the hell, whatever it is the hell they want, no matter what that is. You should, no one should tell you what to do. You should, oh, you should be doing what you want and it doesn't matter. Like, you know, and there's a lot of truth to that. Mm. He takes it a little far, shall we say? He takes it, he takes it too far by a way, way, portion. way too fucking far. But he's not wrong that Lacrosse needs to be dragged oh, into the absolutely. The DA needs to be dragged into the light because absolutely it does. We all agree on this point. Yeah. <laughs> He is not wrong about that. His methodology is way fucking wrong, because it involves a lot of murder and and could try and, tr- and trying to trying to cause other people to murder other people. Yeah, because you know, <clears throat> Majima, I think, likes to think he's an anarchist. He's or, just a dumb kind of a- anarchist. He is very much not an actual like you know, from a actual sociological standpoint or philosophical standpoint, he's not. He is a psycho. He's both a psychopath and a sociopath. <laughs> he doesn't like being told what to. He wants to do whatever the fuck he wants, and he likes chaos. Yeah. So, like, if you know, and he's very much of the opinion that if you know there's too much violence and death in the streets, I would totally be on the side of like of DA and br- helping them bring that down to a more normal level. I don't believe that word for a second from him. Yeah. <laughs> That is what he says on screen. I think he's full of it. Now, it turns out that he is also an Allen Institute child. And he's basically doing what his talent is supposed to be doing, so they have no problem with him. Yeah. He's got a talent for causing chaos and destroying shit, so go do that. Yeah, the Allen Institute are fucked up. Let, let's just be honest. There's a lot yeah. of fucked up in, in, organizations in this in this show. A lot of them, and we have not touched on probably the most actual terrifying one. Well, asterisk. Hmm. So yeah, so basically, it's all this sort of spiraling plot around the. Eventually, Majima is going to try to take out the uh, the new radio tower. And it turns out he's doing that to bait the like Lycoris into a position where he can expose them and then cause a lot of mayhem while doing so. Yeah. The, ma- the majority of his arc, uh, like from the first time we meet him, is him basically learning what Lycoris is. Yep. Um, expo- you know, uh, like getting more and more information on them. Um, managing to take out a few agents. Yep. And eventually learning who Chisato is. And that whole evolution is like he he starts out with an idea, and you see his plan kind of form as the show goes yes. along. Yeah, he develops he, his plan evolves. It's very clear he's given what he's been doing. His plan to his eventual what his big sort of piece of resistance at the end. It's very clear that's what he was setting up to do, basically do from the beginning. Yeah, but he didn't know who he was targeting with it at first. But he eventually got a name for what it is, and he's like, "Aha! This makes my plan better." <laughs> And he's right; it does actually. Yeah, makes it much more effective. No, his plan is much better when you know who you're targeting. 
But yeah, long story short, he sort of stages an attack on the new ra- the new replacement radio tower, where he baits all the like horse there to a trap where he's going to basically expose them on camera, uh, and uh, reveal to everybody in the streets that the like horse exist. And boy, howdy, I've placed guns all over the city for people to pick up and use to defend yourselves against these killer children. Also, yeah. you know, therefore, you got now you have your own guns, you got your own guns, your own freedom to do whatever the fuck you want. You can defend yourself. You have the freedom to defend yourself. And defend yourself how you see the how you feel the word defend applies to you. He's entirely cool with people just going out and murdering people with them too because, you know, it's yeah. that yes. And and we 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 when when this all kicks off, we do see that, you know. Yep. Somebody finds the uh finds a gun, sees somebody in a licorice um, the car is um, uniform, and and he, yeah, shit happens. Yep. Um. So yeah, things get better. Oh, the important other important bit is that we forgot to mention about the like about DA. One of the big things they do is after they the like horse take out a terrorist, they go in and clean up the situation and spread massive disinformation to make sure no one knows it ever happened. Yeah, like there's a a bomb went off here. It was a gas leak. Yeah, that's that's part of the AI's job. Uh, that's the, the, that's the, part of the, the entire department's job. It's not just yeah. the AI, but like, yeah. So we also get dropped a hint at some point. There's a group, another agent, sub agency of DA called Lily Bell, who are the male version of the Lycoris. They're not so much assassins as black op wet works people. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Um, the real impression is that the like horse are very focused and targeted on what they do and try to minimize their, their impact. Lily Bell don't seem to do that so much. They're much... Lily Bell seems to be just burn it to the fucking ground. Yeah. Yeah. Also, we, there's a line later in the show that, that apparently at the, very late in the show where like, this is towards the end. Apparently back in the past, Lily Bell had sent agents to try to take out, take out Chisato at like, at like a Rico a few times. The, the second, the second she was outside of DA and, un, you know, not protected by being, you know, in their organization anymore, officially. Yep. Yeah. They, they tried to take her out multiple times and, uh, eventually learned that was a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> to the point we get a scene later on where like the, the Lily Bell have deployed to clean up the mess. Yep. And, and this is you get the idea. This is what they do, you know. They, they, they. I don't think they operate in Japan, at least not in built up built up areas. These are the guys that go when you know scorched earth kind of situation. Right. Yeah, but it's like guys that take out the the fucking like lunatic militia out in the mountains. Right. Yes. yes. Um. But yeah, there's this this line where they're going in and like the the squad of Lily Bell come around a corner. A couple of them get hit and they back round. The the leader pops his head round and he recognizes Chisato. Immediately on the radio, is like, "Sir, Chisato is here. Should we continue?" <laughs> <laughs> They're like, "Oh fuck!" Like, oh, this just fuck. became way harder. <laughs> this became not a guarantee. This became we might not win. Yeah, boss, should we keep going? <laughs> and the boss and their boss is like, "Well." That looks like the situation has been reined into the point where we don't have to wipe out like Horus. So, fine, stand down. <laughs> it's really clear he wanted to wipe them out. <laughs> yeah. It's like I just want an excuse to get rid of them. Yeah, there's 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 very definitely a shall we say a prof- they do this a lot in spy shows these days. Even even with James Bond, it's like other departments trying to get rid of them. It's like. This professional rivalry, mm. except completely glancing, you know, glossing over the fact that this means, you know, black bagging and disappearing a whole fucking generation of fucking kids. Well, yeah, that why would that be a problem? They, they've already done that. They've like, already done that. They don't exist as far yeah. as they do. Yeah, it's a fucked up world. <laughs> See, so, this, this is this is this is what I was trying to get earlier. I've had to, I've had to think about it. What I'm trying to say is. I think the the from the from the writer's point of view, I think conceptually it's a cool concept if it's managed correctly and done Chisato's way. Maybe from our point of view, looking in, it's like no, this is just a bad concept from the start. You know, <laughs> a fucking underground assassin I, organization. I don't know. I think no. I, I think seeing what the organization did has done to Takina 
Mm. Yeah. Is I think the biggest argument for, yeah, it's just rotten from the ground up. There is no saving uh, DA. It, the, the, see, the thing that counters that for me, though, is the fact that there are, we, we you know, we, we see Fuku and, and uh, the other one, I forget her name, and a couple of others within, who are still within DA and never left DA and are still very much part of it, who are still decent people, uh, kind of. They, they follow orders, but at the end of the day, they uh, did the right we, thing. Except we, we're seeing, also seeing them starting to to make their own decisions and break away from, from the, the it is, strictly rich men in control. It, it yeah. is very clear yeah. that they are they are changing due to a they're getting older. Like that's yeah. a large part of it they meant they do mention is that once you reach like 18 you're out. <laughs> yeah. And we don't know what it, out means. We don't know what out yeah. means. Like like I say I I I get I get the feeling that the concept is the, the writer likes the concepts, but doesn't like like they're they're definitely showing that the methods are wrong. Oh no, Chisa, Chis, I, I think Chisato's I, way would be a lot better. Oh sure, no the the, the writer it, it's very clear as a concept as a narrative storytelling concept. The writer thinks that the Lycoris are are a fun storytelling thing. Absolutely, mm. because they are. It's a great story. They are a great organization to build a story around. You do not want this in the real world. <laughs> And I think that's pretty clear uh, yeah. from the show. I, I, I think uh, part of what Gav's getting at also is that um, if you have all the, the media um, literacy of a drunken three-legged rhinoceros, you might think it's a good idea. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, you can you can absolutely misread the show that way. I agree. Yeah. And I don't I mean, think... You yeah, no, yeah, I'm not saying you're idiot, misreading but... it. I think you're right that the author has a fondness for the Lycoris... Because their his creation is no part of it, like no small part yeah. of it, like that. Of course, he, of course they do. And like within it the setting of the world, they that. do, they they do th- they they do make things more stable, at a yeah. ridiculous price, but at a terrible, awful, monstrous price. But they do. They are unquestionably actually effective at what they're doing, yeah. sort of. So they do sort of spawn think people like Majima showing up. It turns out, like Majima gets like, and Majima, as Eric pointed out, Majima's not entirely wrong. In fact, he's entirely right about the fact that DA's got to be shoved into the sunlight. Fuck. Mm-hmm. But at any rate, um, the other important bit is when we find out about the other thing about Chisato. <laughs> um, yeah, she has an artificial heart. Yeah. Yeah. This this has a whole big chunk of irony written all over. Oh it. yeah, oh yeah, yeah. That, that whole, the girl with no actual about... heart is the biggest heart in the damn show. Um, well, it's not. It's, it's that. It's also the fact that the you know the whole reason why uh, the Allen Institute said that she should be an assassin is because she's the best in the world. But for some reason, she doesn't want to kill. Yep. Yeah, that's yeah. their fault. Yep, it's their own fault. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, basically, Chisato had a congenital heart issue from a very young age. And so yeah. Mika basically like, fuck. Uh she's collapsing. She's really important to the eight to the DA. Well, all right. My boy my, my sort of on again on again boyfriend works for the Allen Institute. Maybe I could Chisato's got like the best potential killer we have. Can you possibly save her? Yeah, they they they, they take him in to watch her doing a training routine and like she's uh. And phenomenal, like, and she she's surrounded by like this is like must be like like eight nine twelve or something like that, and she's surrounded by like uh, eight other licorice like Oris, mm-hmm. and just is untouchable. Oh yeah, but immediately once she's done, immediately collapses, clutching her chest, gagging for gasping for air because right. she, you know. Now said 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 representative is of course Shinji Yoshimatsu because of course it is. Of course it is, and. This uh, th- this explains the way he and Mika talk to each other whenever they interact at, at, at like a Rico. It's like, oh yeah, they used to be a thing. Okay, that their conversations just the the subtext of them makes so much more sense now. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Oh oh, they were a thing. Okay, yeah yeah. The way they sort of look at each other and talk to each other makes a lot more sense now. Like it didn't <laughs> occur to me at the time what was happening. It was happening. But looking at it, like, oh yeah, there's subtext there that was definitely there. Yeah. Well done. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, so he uh, agrees also, to it. Also, un- unexpected. Like, I was honestly surprised that they had a gay man in a such a prominent position in an anime. Yep. Like, 
generally, it's, unless it's like dedicated, this show was for the gays. They are very gun shy about that with yep, Japan. Yep. No, it's, it's also not a like it's not a de- defining factor for him. And it's like no, uh, it's just he's a, he, he's a, he's a man who is yeah he's a man who is gay. It's not. A gay guy. There, there. Yeah. Are, th- this happens every now and then, where shows will have some character, some rep- some character who's a little atypical representation. There's a god that there's that uh, magical school show that's really not, which is better than most of the other ones of its genre, subgenre. Uh, whatever failed night or whatever it was. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Where there's yeah. one of the characters is trans and like she fucking rocks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> but like it's entirely yeah. Here's a trans character. We're just gonna keep moving on now. I mean, they yeah. they do they it's do. A, yeah, it happens every now and then. Is the thing it's it's and it's happening more often, which is great. I mean, this this show also um, does kind of bait a relationship between. Oh, um, oh yeah, it, it very much. I, you could argue, yeah, it's it's very gay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is very not, clear. Chisato very much has a thing for Takina. I mean, yeah. to be fair, there's there's a lot of it within the Lycoris period. Yes. You know, the, the the they all have those kind of interrelations with various different characters. But like, are it, you, it, oh, wait a minute, are you saying that a a gender exclusionary <laughs> group yeah. might have a higher expression of, of gender Could queer? Be. That's ridiculous. Why? Who Could would be. ever do that? Right. But, but, it's, but it's never a focal point. No, it's, it's never, never a, yeah. a point it, of the show. It is the the big thing with 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 Chisato and Takina is Chisato. It's very clear that Chisato has a thing for her, and is she is genu- generally very demonstrably affectionate with her with the people she cares about. Yes, and she very much cares about T- Takina. And a large part of the show is Takina basically warming up to the to their friendship at a minimum. Yeah, I don't. We're. It is not clear whether T- T- Takina feels the same way Chisato feels for her, but that's not actually important at yeah. this, in this part of the show. What's important is they care about each other as because they care about each other. They're as people. It's like. Awesome. Yeah. Now, so the like, underwear episode is I, hilarious. Oh God! Yes. The underwear episode is hilarious. <laughs> I will say, I, I will say flatly, like I would not be surprised if Takina had a thing for Shizato, but that's not like established in the show. At least not. I, I did. I couldn't. I wasn't certain if she was, but I am. You know, I am straight white dude. I'm not good at picking up on this stuff sometimes. Yeah. Mm. I will leave that to the to my queer friends to figure to, to, to yeah. let me know I mean, if there's text I'm, subtext I'm missing or text I'm missing. Also, it doesn't. I don't think it really matters for the, for no, the it, themes or context. No, of the it show. doesn't. It doesn't honestly. Yeah. But like, yeah. At any rate, the important bit though is uh, back to the actual narrative stuff. Um, but yeah, their friendship is like really like one of the big parts of the show that is goddamn fucking adorable, and I love them. Yes. Um. Where was I going with all this shit? Um, oh, right. Yeah. Um, so all this sort of crashes into each other towards the end. Um, oh, right. Yeah. So a lot. So that whole arc I mentioned, we mentioned about uh, the Alan Institute or specifically Yoshi, Yoshi, Yoshimatsu trying to get Takina to do her thing, do what she's supposed to be doing. And eventually gets to the point where, well, fine, fuck it. We will basically short out your heart so it can't be recharged anymore. But we have a backup part that you can have if you do the thing. No? But you're just going to light later and die for this? Yeah. My yep. my, mor- my morals just... are more important than, 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 than buying extra time. I also, it... she was like, yeah, I also had come to, she'd also come to, come to peace with the fact that she was like, she didn't know there was another heart coming. And the current one wasn't going to last forever because she's, not a kid anymore. <laughs> it was a prototype, yeah. Right, it's a prototype, like, and it's going to wear out eventually. But the, yeah, the whole, the whole, the whole stick of it is that basically somebody gave her the gift of life, yep. and it would be morally wrong for her to take that away from other people. Yep. So that, that's the whole reason why she will not kill. Yep. The Allen Institute did that to her. And yeah. Boy, how did they? They gave her a conscience without meaning to. Oops. <laughs> Here is an artificial heart to replace your broken, broken actual heart. You don't have a yeah. real heart anymore. Wow, but you act well. Oh, that gave, you have a conscience now. Um, yeah, it needs it needs recharging every now and again, and it's not designed to last. It's a prototype, so it's not designed to last much past getting into adulthood, which the Lycoris were absolutely fine with because they check out at eighteen anyway. Right. Yeah. After that, they don't care. Right. Uh, for whatever reason that might be, we don't know. 
Mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, talking uh, at the very least, it saves him the cost of a bullet. Mm. But yeah, like talking that does not take the news of the whole like of all of this well, shall we say? And understandably yeah. so. Like, Chisato has become one of the most important people in her life, and is about to go away. And like, that's like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Why are you okay with this? Well, I was going to die at 18, any, not long after 18 anyways, so. Turns out Takana is someone who you do not take things from. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, also, like, Takina has gotten to the point where she's like, wait, 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 wait. This is, what, what's the worst word? word uh, the word that Chisato likes using for this. Bullshit. That's the word. <laughs> <laughs> I have chosen not to suffer bullshit anymore. <laughs> fuck that noise. She's my friend. I'm going to save my fucking friend. <laughs> it's okay, Takina. No, it's not. Shut up, Chisato. <laughs> it's not okay. That's bullshit. So yeah, uh, we get the big, con- the bi- big confrontation at the tower, and uh, yeah, I will definitely say Majima's plan is legit for what he's trying to accomplish is a brilliant fucking plan. Yeah, holy shit, his plan is really fucking good. No small part of it is he wants an actual confrontation with Chisato. Oh, we also find out that he was the one behind the first radio tower blowing up. Yes, and that. He was kind of freaked out by what she saw to do at that age and is now like, wait, that was you? Oh, shit. How the fuck did she do that? Oh, her eyesight's really fucking good. Okay. That's good because uh, I have really good fucking hearing. Yep. So he can do a lot of what she does, it turns out. And part of the reason she can get the drop on it sometimes is she has no heartbeat. Yeah, hmm. that was literally, we, we've seen a flashback scene where he's He's like leaning into the fucking supervillain trope real hard. He's wearing, he's literally wearing, wearing, a blindfold. A band- wearing a blindfold with shades over the top. Yeah. And guiding the other terrorists to take out the, the attacking licorice who they, they don't know it's them because there's a huge smoke screen going on. Right. No one can see anything, but he's just like, you know, upper balcony at 12 o'clock, you know, and keep keeping everyone pinned down. And until the monster shows up that he can't deal with because he can't hear her coming. Because he's not, he's not used to, he, he's used to hearing a lot of different sounds for a person and is, there's one missing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that can't actually be a person except that it was. But now that he knows that, he's like, ah, now I can work around this. And they have the, the big confrontation between the two of them at the old radio tower after the whole trap goes down is fucking brilliant. It's, the symbolism is so fucking good. Yes. Yes. Because Majima just kills the lights. No, no windows, no nothing. Just kills the lights and engages her that way. And it's entirely a, a um, Chisato looking for the light while trying to avoid getting shot by the sky in the shadows. And that's why he can't. He's not the one to bring Lakoris out of the shadows because he is a creature of shadow too. And it's really fucking cool. It's who burst through the door? Takina. Takina. She breaks open the she wall. She brings the light. light. <laughs> it's so good. It's so fucking good. It's also the again the the fight choreography in this oh is also fucking amazing. Yeah, it's top notch fight choreography. Like really they're is. doing the whole they're doing the whole thing where they can't hit each other because they're too good at ev- ev- being evasive and all the rest of it. He can hear everything coming. She can see everything. So okay, she she realizes she can't hit him. So fires a shot right next to his ear. Yeah. Then spins around and hits the other one too. It's like you're fucked. That's how she wins the fight. It's so good. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Now, of course, this doesn't stop him permanently. No. No. So, yeah, she eventually... The other burden is that he is taking Yoshimatsu hostage. Quote, hostage. Uh, no, they were working together the whole time, so... Uh, so, talking to... Uh, Yoshimatsu is working with him because, like, for a lot of different reasons. One of which is trying to get to get Chisato to do, do what she's supposed to do. And like he's like, and eventually, like you know, they 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 confront each she they confront each other, and she's like, you know, and he's like, well, I have a, a new heart for you. It's in my body. If you kill me, you can have it. She's like, no, nah, not gonna do it. Talking is like, yeah, I'll totally fucking do it. No, no, you're not doing it. I'm doing it. You're not doing it. I'm doing it. <laughs> like. Chisato has to physically restrain Takina to stop her putting yeah. a bullet in his head. 
Yeah, who is uh, not handling any of this well. No. Understandably. Understandably. And Chisato makes the point that's like, look, I can't be me if that's how I get the heart. Like, especially if it's like someone like, if it's like someone like you who does it. Like, no, please, I can't. Uh, which, of course, when his pet, his pet bodyguard assassin type comes in and basically starts kicking, talking his ass. And he's like, well, you have to kill, you have to kill her to save your friend's life. And Chisato's like, fuck, no, I don't. <laughs> But I've I've taken your but your actual you only have life lethal bullets right now. Ha 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 ha! I can shoot parts of the body that won't kill her. Wait, what? Uh... Yeah, Yoshi. Yoshi. He, he spends a lot of the time thinking he's the smartest man in the room. There are a lot of people who think that in the show, and there are not. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Almost everyone who thinks that is not the smartest man in the room. <laughs> no, really not. It's really funny. Except. Uh... Uh, Corinna. No, I no, I think Maki is the only guy that thinks he's the smartest guy in the room and is the smartest guy in the room because he doesn't fucking advertise. Yes, because he's not <laughs> trying to be the smartest guy in the room. Right, yes. so yeah, uh, eventually Yoshi Yoshimatsu gets away. Um, and then, of course, Majima shows up again and they get into another fight and stuff happens. But eventually, Yoshimatsu is confronted by Mika. And Mika is done with all the bullshit. <laughs> yeah, Mika's like, you know what? I'm done. Well, what about your cane? What about my cane? Oh, you fucker. Uh -huh. Yeah, never never show everyone all your cards. Well, to, to, be, to, be, fair, to be fair, we, we get this because his bodyguard goes after me, you know, goes to, to try and attack Mika. Yeah. And Mika kicks her ass. And he just fucking baseball bats her in the gut and just crushes her with one shot. <laughs> Like with the cane, like, yeah. that was not there for support. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by the way, this is after Kurumi has figured out where the spare that there that she's figured out there is a spare heart, and so she basically like, "Hey, Mika, there's a spare heart. Let's go, let's go, let's go save Taki together." And Mika's like, "Wait, Yoshi lied. Oh, that fucker. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I am so done with him. Like, yeah, I love you, buddy, but no. you lied to an assassin. You." You fucked with people he you, cares you, you, about. You, you, are the, you, you were the one person, like, yeah, we were lovers, but, dude, she's my daughter now. Yeah. <laughs> don't, you don't, you don't do that. So she, she's not as effective with your craziness. Yes. It's like, dude, you made it, you, you made me her guardian. Yeah. Well, he assumed that Mika would stay a cold-hearted assassin for the rest of his life because he'd found his purpose and nobody can change their purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Yoshimatsu is an idiot. <laughs> no, I want to. I want to carry on. I want to run a restaurant with young girls selling giant chocolate turds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's sort of roughly. So Mika pulls it, kills him, and gets her. Gets 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 the heart for Takina. Of course, he doesn't tell her that he killed Yoshimatsu for it. Oh no, uh, yeah, I found it in the suitcase. It, it was yeah. fine. He Don't was lying the whole time. It wasn't in his chest. Oh. Okay. Huh. Because Mika had lied I mean, to her before about this sort of stuff, and Takina and Shizato has no problem with that. Like, yeah, yeah, no. That was good. That made me a better person. Great. <laughs> Honestly, like, yeah, me not knowing about the whole, what the, how the Alan operates and what I'm supposed to do, that enabled me to choose what I want to do for myself. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you told me now because it's important that I know. But at the time, that was the correct move. Thank you. Right, and I'm pr and I'm pretty sure she knows exactly how he got the heart. Probably, and is choosing not to acknowledge it. Yes. Well, it, it's like the, you know the deed's it, done at this point. No, does no one any good to pull the she can't, thing out she, of? Her well, yeah, she can't fix. It. She can't stop it from happening. So yeah. yeah. Plus, plus, it's the point where like she didn't want. Um, she really didn't want talking to do it. She didn't. She didn't want talking to do it because. The whole point of talking to her, of her, you know, with with her is trying to break her from that behavior, that right. attitude, that that you know, that uh, that killing solves your problems. Yeah. With with Mika, it's a case of he's a grown ass man; he can make his own choices. Yeah, that's also and true. And he and she knows, like, she's known him long enough to know that that's not his first choice. Right. He won't. He won't have done that without considering everything. Yep. But yeah, so it it it, it, it look, for a while it looks like everyone's like, well. Uh, Chisato's disappeared. We don't know what happened to her. 
Uh, and so <laughs> yeah. Takina goes hunting her down and finds her in Hawaii. Uh, where just suddenly went woken up in the hospital, like, huh, I'm not dead. I have no idea how long I have left to live. Fuck it. I've always wanted to go to Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, instead of, instead of like a friend, she wakes up suspicious as fuck, just looks around for a bit, grabs some clothes, and just scoots out the door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think her basic assumption is okay. I've been I've been brought rescued by by DA, and they they're gonna want something from me. Fuck that noise. Um, <sighs> I'm out. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm, how, however long I've got left, I'll spend it on the beaches in Hawaii. That'll be awesome. I'm not dead yet. The the little joke they throw in afterwards is the only reason they found her. Is because um, she showed up in the background of a photograph that the original, you know, the the gun deal, the the woman they were protecting, right, right. <laughs> who <laughs> caught the gun deal in the background of a photograph. <laughs> so good. She's like, you know, they're, they're like, you know what? Sooner or later, I wouldn't be surprised if she like discovers aliens just accidentally in the background of a yeah. photograph. Oh my god. I lo- there was also a bit just tr- tr- talking to me. Tr- tr- so the, the leader of DA is in fact a lizard person, right? Yeah. But like, just talking to Asher, said, why did you disappear? Well, I'm really bad at goodbyes, and I'd already made peace with everything, and I, I thought I was going to go die. I thought I was dying, so I thought I'd already done the goodbyes for for I'm going to die, so I didn't know I was going to live. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so what are we going to do now? Uh, what we were doing before, just in Hawaii. Okay. <laughs> Well, is there anything you haven't done that you want to do? Yes. The job we were doing, but in a different place. Yes. But not Japan. Why not Japan? Because that means we don't have to deal with fucking DA. At least not directly. (laughs) As Eric said, they literally became the fucking A-team. They really did. They're the A-team now. You know what? Awesome. (laughs) Yeah. And that's, that's that's like Horse Recall. There might be another season of it at some point. I don't know. If there is, I'll watch it. They're definitely sequel baiting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, the, the, they, everyone's best efforts, uh, Lecorus uh, survives. Sort of crawls Majima's back into the shadows. Kind of, yeah. But uh, Majima's still kicking around. We see that he survives the, the final conflict. And he's he convinces somebody who found one of his guns to use it. Um, I mean, that that is the biggest, like, I say issue that we had. The, the biggest, like, hang you know hanging on point there mm-hmm. is the fact that like Oris gets to go back into the shadows. And it yeah. makes sense that it does. They covered it up. Um, because the alternative would have caused a lot of shit for a lot of people. Yeah, but... Uh, but there's more... Th- th- there is definitely potential for more of a story there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and we, we see that they're not as in deep in the shadows as they... Majima's they plan worked be. a little bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He makes the point uh, that even if they cover it up, the questions are being asked. Yeah, and people are looking into it. Like, this sounds a bit too pat and easy. Let's, uh... Let's just dig a little bit. And we yeah, see like, people starting to do that. And they can't say in this they like and he's right, they probably can't stay completely shattered forever. They're gonna have, they're going to have to change. Yeah. Also, Lily Bell will have to fucking change. God fucking please. Both of them just fuck. I can actually see season two being Lily Bell trying to hunt them down. Oh god, yeah. Oh, yeah. That that yeah, that oh no. There is no question in my mind that Lily Bell is like, okay, we Chisato and Takina are nowhere, and 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 Mika are nowhere near Japan. Therefore, we can totally take them out. They have no one to protect them. And then we find out the Americans have their own version. I mean, <laughs> I mean it's I'm called the CIA. Well, it's, it's, it's CIA. Well, yes, yeah. it's called the CIA. Well, yes, called the CIA. I'm going to be perfectly honest. Like, uh, if someone came up with an idea like uh, like licorice, the United States would be one very angry, angry, and and, and say that this is a terrible thing mm-hmm. and to figure out how to implement it as quickly as possible for themselves. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> that and say that as an American. Yep. Yeah. But that's like Horus Recoil. Uh, there's a lot of really interesting shit going on in the show, legitimately. Yeah. Um, like, I, like I, I was of... honestly surprised at, at how, how much was going on in the show. Yeah. It's a lot of... And, it, is, and... it is a... It is, <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, Eric. And how angrily Peter and I were arguing about the fucking um, <laughs> uh, ending. Because it was like, God damn it, how did it survive? It has to survive, Eric, because otherwise all those uh, girls die. They're dead anyway, uh, Peter. <laughs> Licorice isn't going to let them survive. <laughs> but then, yeah, but then, like I say, as we discussed, then, yeah, it's... You then paint... 
You know, people, there's a problem. Young, that, yeah. young, young, young women in Japanese schoolgirl outfits are now the evil. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're now like they're it's a mess. It's it a is a horrible mess. That's the yeah. mess. Yeah. It's a horrible is, fucking mess. Yeah. And yeah. again, I will also say flatly, all of this is because of choices the author made in creating the story. Yes. This is not if the author told chosen told the story a different way, a different ending would have been possible. Yep. That's true in any piece of fiction. Yes, this oh, yeah. is true for anything. Yes. So like if something objectionable that is like morally bankrupt is happening in the story, that's because the author chose to put it in there. Yep. I... <laughs> um now, again, I, I I agree. I agree. Eric and I basically we're arguing about something we basically agree on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which we do As a lot. We do frequently. <laughs> <laughs> Lipris does not deserve to exist. Nope, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> we well, both agree on this but entirely. For the, but for the sake of society not eating itself, it has to. It, you know, it, if for given now. that it, given that it does, and given what has happened, the current solution, the current solution that happened in the show is the least terrible. Yes. <laughs> Still not sure about that, and honestly. you might be right, Eric. I actually feel like you might be right about that. That's my reason. Because it, it, at the longest, the longer it exists, the more people there, the I, more people they're killing, the more orphans they're indoctrinating. I'm not saying you're wrong, system. Eric. You, you I'm know, not like saying you're say, wrong. I, I I think you're right, but like like I've said, releasing that kind of information with no facts or explanation or anything, and basically telling the you know the 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 mass populace that. You might get murdered by a small child in a schoolgirl outfit, outfit, and where that might go and expand, it, it takes me back to that that the the uh, you know the, the 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 line from Men in Black: a person is smart, people are stupid. Yes, and people are la- or, or what built licorice in the. Oh first yeah, no, place. no. Again, no, like, would allow it. To but what I'm saying exist. is, you have to. Yeah, yeah. You cannot dismantle something like that with a sledgehammer. Well, you can. It has to be done. Oh no, 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 you can. You absolutely can, and it will cause chaos. Whether yes. that chaos is well, better than letting it exist for a time is what's up. Oh, what is the debate? Yes. What the debate is? And, yeah, yes. and what we're not, debating about. And I yeah. will say also, there's no clear answer to that right now. Yeah, that, that's that's more my point. Yeah, for for society's sake, at least the way that's been presented. I wouldn't say there's a society's sake. I would say for people, for individuals who are just going about their daily lives' sake. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. But anyway, that's it is a point that is worth discussing and debating. Honestly, yes. And it's a gr- I love the fact the show raises that fucking question. Yes. Mm-hmm. The fact that Eric and I and Gav- Eric Gavin and I are having this argument, we're having this debate is good. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Especially as we all basically agree. <laughs> it's a yeah, gr- we, we, we all agree, we all agree from different directions. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> It's Fuck. just a matter of like how we pull it apart. Right. This must yeah, be pulled apart. Like, how do we pull it we apart? All agree, we all agree it needs to be dismantled. Peter, put down the sledgehammer. I've got a perfectly good screwdriver. Eric, why did you get a monster truck and a tow cable? <laughs> they were out of explosives? <laughs> <laughs> but long story short, should you watch the show? God fucking yes. Yes. <laughs> we'll go into final thoughts in a second, but like... God, this, oh yeah. Let, let, let's go into final thoughts, actually. So, Eric, you first, then Gav, then me. All right. So, um, so I have nothing but glowing recommendations for this show. It is beautifully animated with excellent choreography for all the gunplay mm-hmm. and, and martial arts and, and whatnot. The characters are um, well written, relatable, and uh, just a lot of fun. Um, it, it's got excellent, I um themes and, and theses and every uh, and everything it absolutely rewards the viewer for for peeling back the layers and looking at it from different angles mm-hmm. like and it's so disgustingly sweet looking yes <laughs> god damn she's like, not talking to her adorable they're 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 fucking adorable you could easily be forgiven for thinking this is just some like throw away moe blob with guns like and you could be forgiven for thinking that you could you could absolutely enjoy it on that level. It's mm-hmm. like fucking Verhoeven. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You can enjoy it purely on that level and have a good time. But it absolutely rewards you for pulling it apart and looking at the different themes and the greater implications of what's going on. And that's really cool. I really like this show. <laughs> like, yeah, that, 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 I don't have any complaints, which is rare. Yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, Gav. I, except for the ending, I have, oh, yeah, I have problems with the ending because, god damn it, they survived. 
Like, Lycoris well, should not have been allowed to to survive. And God damn it, Walnut, why didn't you just pull the fucking trigger? <laughs> why didn't well, you just dump it all on the fucking internet and say, fuck you, I'm gone? <laughs> you had the opportunity. <laughs> I think this this is the biggest takeaway from the show. We're all we're all very positive about it, but the biggest yeah. the biggest thing going in is that, like like Eric says, you can enjoy it in multiple levels. <clears throat> um, if you, the, the the more you dig into it, the more the you know there's always something new to find. Um, yeah. and the interesting thing about it is that, and God, you know this is sacrilege to anime fans all around the world you know it's like you can enjoy this in a way that somebody next to you can enjoy in a completely different way oh yeah, yeah that, that, that both... is sacrilege to fan bases in general gav yeah, exactly yeah it's like you 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 can have like five different people in a room you can all enjoy that show but you will all enjoy it for different reasons and have completely different opinions to this show than the person next to you it's like you're all watching a different fucking show you know, it's like, don't be, don't be put off if you don't agree with the, you know, even with what we said. If you yeah. like this for a completely different reason, great. That's what it's trying to do. It's trying to get you to think. And yes, I like it. <laughs> See, even he even saw me. I can't explain it. I, I don't think. I just basically exist and say words. <laughs> but it tried to make me think. I tried to express a point. I was wrong, but I tried to express a point. <laughs> Go watch it. Find your own point. Yeah. No, it's yeah. As I, I was the big thing, big takeaway I was going to say is that what, that in addition to all the things we talked about, and I am certain there are people who utterly missed the actual underlying themes. Like I, one, oh yeah, one hundred percent people 100%. that there are people who are angry about the show because it glorifies state 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 violence. Mm-hmm. And on the surface, it actually does. They, they're they, they're right. Yeah. But that's not the underlying theme of the show. <laughs> like, the entire show is about, yeah, this is bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the, but I can so understand why those, you can yeah. miss that also is the thing, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, you can easily miss that if you're not looking at it with a critical eye. Mm-hmm. Um, or if you're going to it, if you're going to it expecting it to be glor- to be glorifying state violence and not say not be present, presenting a counter argument to it, yeah, like it, that's what you're looking for. That's another thing you that you, you'll very likely catch it. Like, but at any rate, but it is so easy to just sit down and just it's a it it is a very good wildly fun popcorn show. Yeah, and the fact that it's so short is oh yeah really helps. It's also really good for binging. Oh yeah. Uh, the music's great. Also, uh, the dialogue is is snappy and witty without feeling unnatural. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like uh, this is this is how people like this is how smart this. It feels like people talk this way. It does not yes, feel yeah. like you know Sorkin at his worst. <laughs> like <laughs> I like Sorkin, actual... but sometimes his dialogue is like no people do not speak this way, Aaron. It's people having actual conversations and in and again not just. I'm saying this because the script needs me needs me to say this. It's like whenever they say something, there's a reason behind it. Mm-hmm. Oh. Like they don't like the the ones who are guarded will be very careful and measured with their words. Mm-hmm. Like even Chisato, she's a, a complete ditz. Like whatever, really expressive. She never gives the game away on a lot of her, uh, on a lot of her stuff. No, nope. you know she's. I also yeah. really want to give a real shout out to uh, we watched the Japanese uh, the Japanese yeah. voice act voice mm-hmm. version. Uh, so I can't comment on how good the, the English dub is. Uh, I, I'm actually interested to see it yeah. at some point. But uh, Chika Anazi uh, Anzai was the voice actress of Chisato. Holy shit, she knocks it out of the fucking park. Yes, yes. Like everyone's good. She is superlative in my opinion. Like. Yeah, she does an excellent job with it. Yeah, she she covers this whole. There's the, 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 a whole range with Chisato from, like I say, bubbly airhead until something happens and she gets serious, and you hear that maturity come into her voice. And yeah, she she she's got the the whole range in there. She's really good. Yeah, like the the, the voice acting is really good overall, but like Chisato's voice actress is fantastic. She's, yeah, she's really good. They're, they're all good, but yeah. Peter's right. She's very, very good. 
I, and it may just be that like this is a role she just clicked with perfectly. Like that happens. Yeah. Like sometimes there's a role that is just made for you. Uh, I, I think my favorite example in, among vo- English voice actors is Stephen Bloom and Spike Spiegel. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, I, definitely. That yeah. But at any rate, that is uh. So the voice actors like Vasha Stampede. Yes. Yeah. 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 Actually. Chisato's a lot like Vasher Stampede, actually. She really she is, is yeah, actually, yeah. thinking about it, yeah. And by the way, Less this is a compliment. Vash is one of my favorite characters. Yeah, Vash yeah. is a good character. A little, a little less frustrating and annoying at times. Like, does it doesn't Well, this is Chisato... not a straight out com- this is not a straight out comedy. <laughs> no. Yeah. Chisato isn't like like frustrating to the point of annoyance. <laughs> She's just a ball of energy. But at any rate. We highly rec- we all highly recommend this show. Yeah, this is it's a, a lot show. of fun. Um, go check it out. Uh, and uh, that's it for Like Horse Recoil. Uh, Eric has got the next series selection, but uh, has not picked one yet. Correct? I, I've actually have a couple ideas. I'm going to talk to you guys once we're off stream. Okay, them. that's fine. All right, cool. Anyways, that's going to do it for this episode, folks. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys had fun, and we'll see you guys in the near future. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.